Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Lessons from the Ridge. Hope everyone's doing well this morning. We have 10 RA in here. Wow, awesome. Happy Sunday to me and to everyone else that's coming out on this uh, gorgeous day God has given us. Um, we have a real treat today. We really do. Um, something a little different than I normally do, and we'll see how it goes. But I do appreciate everyone for coming out. Let's see who we're having here. We have um, the Milkman. Come on. Come on, Homestead. Auntie Ann isn't here. DK Family Adventures. Good friends there. Let's see here. Of course, we have Journey Along with Shannon. Shannon, how you doing this morning? Linda Wall, our good friend, Linda Wall. Thank you. And Carolyn Newman. Lila Newton, I'm sorry. Lazy C. Homestead. Evelyn Newman. I said Carol, Carolyn Messer. I do apologize, Carolyn and Evelyn. I knew something was wrong when I said that. That came out of my mind. I was looking at Lila Newton's name, and I just started throwing names out, and they all mixed together. I apologize for that. <laughs> you guys know I know who you are. I appreciate you. Um, man, we have so many good friends in here. Mary Ranch. How you doing, Mary? Uh, Mary is the one that always uh, gets me hungry on Tuesdays when I'm preparing my Tuesday watch and grow. Man, Mary cooks so well, man. Her 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 recipes just make me hungry, 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 hungry. Hope everyone's doing well this morning. I'm just scrolling through here, looking at all the names as we get going. Hopefully, I didn't miss a lot of people in here. Um, of course, Papper Homestead had a little live this morning, a little coffee talk. Thanks for uh, allowing me to join in that this morning. Papper Homestead, good morning. Uh, let's see here. Awesome friends and family. A little more time, a little, a little more people come on in. Um, what we're talking about today is the, the healing power of prayer. And as you all know, uh, my wife Starla just had um, um, surgery for uh, stage one breast cancer. And um, for those of you who don't know, she's doing well. Um, the uh, tissue was removed. Um, some samples were taken of some lymph nodes just to make sure things are clear there. The doctor said things looked good. We'll see what the uh, biopsy of the extra tissue they took out was again it was stage one so had not spread anywhere and if all of this surgery takes you know does well and she heals well this may be uh, it for her you know routine testing and things but let's just continue to pray that uh god continues to heal her in his time that's kind of what we're talking about today we're talking about all kinds of healing prayer uh, and i i just thank every one of you so so much for all the prayers you gave over this uh, last few weeks, it, it, it's been a trying time. You know, um, it's it, it's tough. It's tough when your when your spouse goes through something like this. Any any loved one that has this uh, the big C uh, mentioned in their lives, and uh, but those that have faith, that those that rely on the strength of the Lord to carry you throughout your day, we really do seem to have a little easier path, don't we? And you're like Tim. No, we still get cancer. We, we, we get trials and tribulations left and right as a Christian. Our path is not easy. Well, no, it's not easy, but it sure is clear. It's clear as a Christian that, yes, things like cancer will be thrown at us and things like, you know, uh, um, loss of job and, and, and uh, uh, health issues with your family members. Those things will happen. Those, they're guaranteed happen in your life, whether you're a Christian or not, but especially as a Christian. But our path is very, very clear. We follow, we follow Christ in all his ways. And those things that come out at us left and right are but mere obstacles for us to, with Jesus's hand, to overcome. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've never felt that, You've never felt Jesus's hand reach out to you and say, we got this, buddy. We, we, we got this. Just keep walking. Just keep your eyes focused right here, Tim. Just keep your eyes focused right here. Walk, walk through the fire. I've got you. I've got you. If you don't know what that feels like, please, brothers and sisters, get in the Bible. Get with someone who, who can lead you to that path of salvation, because it is an amazing feeling that when you are at your worst, Jesus is always at his best. And when you're with someone like that, it doesn't matter how bad you are, how lost you are, how fallen you are. 
you will be lifted to the highest heights in the blink of an eye. It is amazing. It's amazing, amazing feeling. So I hope every one of you listening today, 19 people in here right now, I hope every one of you listening today has felt that feeling of salvation in your soul, in your heart, in your lives, to that when the big C like cancer comes out at you or a loss of family member or a loss of job or just pick a, pick a catastrophe, when those things hit you, your path is clear. It's it, the stumbling is less. Yes, we will stumble. Yes, we will fall, but we won't be lost. We will not be lost. I promise you. Good morning, D Gads. Good to have you in here this morning. Kevin, Lazy Pond Farm. Thanks, you, brother. And uh, I know I missed a couple people. I do apologize. And as I see the names coming through, I'll, I, I'll definitely uh, um, say good morning to you. I, I appreciate you. Well, guys, today, what we are doing today is a little special. Um, this, hopefully, y'all know. Dr. Adrian Rogers, Dr. Adrian Rob Rogers from the Love Worth uh, Finding, Love Worth, yeah. He is the, he was the pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church here in Memphis, Tennessee. It's the church Starl and I go to. Um, he, uh, he has since passed on. He's the late Dr. Rogers. Uh, Love Worth Finding Ministry is amazing on the radio all the time now. You can, you can listen to him. You can see him on, on, on uh, the internet. I got, I got the, the pleasure of, of seeing him preach. I went to a passion play and we came down to visit when I wasn't living in the area. And Brother Rogers is an amazing, amazing pastor. So normally I don't do sermons here on Lessons from the Ridge. We do lessons, Bible lessons, Bible studies, uh, more discussions and, um, um, you know, Sunday school type things. We, 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 we talk I and mean, we'll still be talking and I'll be looking at comments. And I hope I hope you guys are discussing and commenting amongst yourselves, talking about beautiful stories of of the power of healing, uh, asking questions, please ask questions. Um, but well, what, what I'm doing today is uh, Dr. Rogers did this wonderful, wonderful uh, a sermon on the, the healing power of prayer. And uh, I've taken a lot of that and I, I've put it on paper and uh, uh, we'll be discussing through it more editorializing. I'm not going to, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm just a, a, a saved brother and sister like you. Uh, but we're going to take his words, a lot of his words, and we're going to um, use them today for our lessons from the ridge. So it's still a lessons from the ridge, but it's based on Dr. Rogers' um, wonderful, wonderful sermon on the, the power, the healing power of prayer. I noticed the uh, comments aren't moving, and I uh, hope that's because y'all are uh, uh, listening and not because I lost everybody. <laughs> there they go. Fireball Fred's in the house. Good morning, buddy. Evans Family Homestead. Sweet Pea Farm, New York. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Florida Chick Adventures. Good morning. Wow, everybody just popped on my screen all of a sudden. 22 people in here. Thank you. J.H., good morning. Um, awesome, Sweet Pea. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, um, yeah. everything just popped up on my, uh, my uh, comments there. I was like, nothing was happening for the longest time, and all of a sudden, boom, everything pulled through. Auntie Ann, thank you so much for being here. She's one of my awesome moderators. I got Lila Newton in here, joining along with Shannon's moderator. Of course, Kevin from Lazy Pond Farm. So many, so many great friends here. John, Baddest Bees is in here. Um, let's see. John says, man, my boy had a bad heart. Blue rings around his wrist. Uh, they just say EKG came out fine like I knew it would. Praise God. Thank you. Awesome, John. Man, that's 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 scary. I, I Like we were talking about earlier, those storms will come. And uh, and we really don't know the outcome. We can pray for the outcome. And that's a, that's a good example. A lot of people, a lot of people take the verse. Whatever you pray in my name, you will receive. And we, we a lot of people say, oh, anything I want, I can have. I just got to pray in Jesus name. and It's mine. I, I want a million dollars. Jesus, Lord, please. In your name, give me a million dollars. Lord, I want to be president of the United States. Jesus' name, please. You know, I'm, I want to be king of the world. I, I, I want to I want to be, have the powers of, you know, uh, pick a superhero. Pick a superhero. And, and people take that verse, whatever you pray in my name, you shall receive. And then we and then we get let down by the Bible. We get let down by Christ when it doesn't happen. Why is that? Why is the why is the, some of those prayers not fulfilled? Well, today we're going to talk about that. Today we're going to talk about why some of your prayers aren't fulfilled and why some of them are. And 
what that process looks like. What does the Bible, what does the verses around that verse that we so butcher say? What is the context? What is the, what is Jesus, what is God telling us around prayer? I love this. Again, Brother Adrian Rogers, amazing, amazing man. I, I, I love I love this uh, lesson today, and I hope y'all. It may, it may go a little long. We'll see. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in love with it. So, and hopefully, hopefully you are too. Um, Matt, the Payne family, good to see you here, buddy. Starla is doing well. She is um, healing. It's, it's there's lots and lots of pain. Um, it was a massive, massive surgery, um, removing all that tissue. Um, but the doctors believe they got it all, and they're doing some biopsies on uh, on some, a lymph node they pulled out. Said it looked good, but uh, the mass in the breast tissue is gone, and uh, we are we are very very helpful, very 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 helpful. Catherine's RV. Good morning. Good morning. Alicia's asking for prayer regarding her son. He had an abnormal EKG and he, and started seizure seizure meds. He is nonverbal, and we are concerned uh, possibly reacting. Yeah, my daughter reacted to a seizure med. So lots of prayers, everyone. Uh, be mindful of the comments today, please. We want to lift up all these prayers. We can't do a lesson on prayer and ignore the prayers of our brothers and sisters. So I, I might not be able to call out your prayer request as I'm doing the lesson today, guys. But there's so many people in here that are reading them, hopefully responding to them and lifting them up as as I talk today. OK, guys. Because uh, this is this is a little bit lengthy lesson, but I, man, I think you're going to really enjoy it. Uh, again, this is from Adrian Rogers, Bellevue Baptist Church. Uh, he's since passed on, but I love love this man, and I think you will too. Uh, so today, I want to speak to you about the healing power of prayer from James chapter five, verse sixteen. We'll we'll go all around the Bible, but this is where we're going to uh, focus on. Confess your faults one another, and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's so much packed into those little verses, everybody. There's so much packed. Now, I want you to know, as surely as I'm sitting here, that I, that God heals. He does. He heals. I believe that God heals naturally. I believe that God heals supernaturally. And I believe that God heals instantaneously. And I believe that God heals in time. But I believe he is the Lord, our God, who heals all of our diseases. I believe that God heals through medicine. And I thank God for the doctors. And I believe that God heals through miracles. And he heals beyond the doctor's arts of science and medicine. He sure does. He, he can do all these things. He can do all these things. i clear some pop-ups here so I can see what everybody's saying. 27 people in here. Thank you all so much for joining on this Sunday, Lessons from the Ridge. <sighs> Dr. R.A. Torrey said this, Nothing lies beyond the reach of prayer except that which lies outside the will of God. <sighs> Another great preacher of yesteryear said this, When we depend upon organization, we get what organization can do. And that's something. When we depend upon education, we get what education can do. And that's something. When we depend upon money, we get what money can do. And that's something. When we depend upon singing and preaching, we get what they can do. And that is something. But then, then Dr. A.C. Dixon said, when we depend upon prayer, we get what God can do. And then this great preacher went on to say, what all the churches and all the homes and all the schools and all the individuals need is what God can do. And how shall we get what God can do? By prayer. Prayer of the hearts that are right with God. Prayer that are right in the hearts with God. All those things, money and power and education and medicine, they do what they do. But to get what God does, we need to pray. Pray to the Lord on high. It's that simple. Isn't that amazing? We, we think about all those things that happen in the world, in our lives, 
And we rely so much on them. We rely on our car to get us to work. We rely on our job to, to get the money to pay the bills. We rely on our house to keep us dry and warm. But when it comes to the most important things, we should be relying on God. We should be relying on God. And to do that, we need to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Because like the birds of the, of the trees and the winds, they don't worry about where their seed will come. God will provide it. The house is here. God has provided it. The job is here. God has provided it. The car is here. God has provided it. Those things fail. Those things break down. Those things will deteriorate, right? And I pray for God's interceding, intercedence, intervention. He can provide all those things as needed. But those are God works, not man works, not Tim works, not Linda works, not Eva works, not Alicia works, not not any of those works. Those that's God's work, God's work in our lives. Our work is for him. Everything we do is for him and all the rest of this will take place. Through God's mercy and grace. It's temporal. That's right, Alicia, it's temporal. Now, this message today is going to deal with the healing power of prayer. But I want to remind you all that there is more than healing of the body. There are souls that need to be healed. There are churches that need to be healed. There are homes that need to be healed. There are fellowships that need to be healed. There are spirits that need to be healed. And there are minds that need to be healed. And indeed, there are bodies that need to be healed. Now, James tells us how, how to pray so that to bring about the healing power of God in our bodies. And he also talks about it in our minds, in our spirits, in our homes, in our relationships, so that God, who is the God that heals our diseases, will move and heal us in all those ways. There's several things I want you to notice, guys. And it's this again, James is so amazing in this realm. He is so amazing. He he doesn't want you to just pray for healing of your body. There's so much more to be healed in our lives. So much more. Joy Blessed Life, good morning. Hope you all are. Man, I, I get up in the mornings and I uh, I used to scroll through Facebook first. Now, now I scroll through uh, YouTube to see, good morning, Yuri. Colleen, good morning, good morning. I know there's uh, Catherine. I know there's a bunch of y'all I missed probably while I was reading. But I get up and I scroll through YouTube now to see who's live. Like Patrick Homestead was live this morning. Joy Blessed Life. Um, so many people go live uh, on, on, in the mornings now. And if you want to be refreshed, be refreshed with friends of like mind. Don't turn on the news and be um, dissatisfied with the world. Uh, Matt Payne put a post out today. I believe it was Matt Payne that don't watch too much HGTV because you'll be uh, you'll look around and you'll be dis dis dissatisfied with your house. Don't don't watch too much Facebook uh, or you'll be dissatisfied with your life and don't watch too much of the news, you'll be dissatisfied with the world. You know, turn, turn to the word, turn to your, your close friends. So if you open up Facebook, I'm sorry, YouTube, and you see all these wonderful friends going live or putting out these new publishing, these new videos in the mornings, take some time and, and, and get with your friends because it's a little different. When you watch someone's videos on YouTube, you're watching little snippets of their lives. And you guys know, you guys know who those who those friends are that show their real lives, that show, that show the, the goods and the bads, the, the things they need prayer for and the things they're rejoicing over. And I just love sharing that with them. So thank you all. Thank you all so much. Good morning, Lori. Sweet Pea Farm, New York says, my heart is full hearing you share Christ's love with all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Good morning. So many awesome. Rebel Canners, good morning. Good morning. So first of all, I want you all to notice that the confession that precedes this kind of healing. Notice in verse 16, confess your faults to one another. Ooh. Now, this perhaps is the reason we don't see more healing, everybody. This is the reason we don't see more 
answered prayers. This is the reason that prayers are not answered in other realms as well. Other than the realm of healing, is we are great at concealing our sins rather than confessing them, are we not? It is so easy. We hide them behind, you know, veils. You know, we 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 put up walls, don't we? We put up walls. Now we love, we love to criticize our friends and castigate our foes. But we do not like to confess our faults. But the Bible doesn't say we're to criticize our friends. The Bible doesn't say we're to castigate our foes. The Bible says that we are to confess our faults. But that's the last thing many of us want to do. To err is human. To cover it up is also. We don't want to confess our faults. But I tell you, there are there are some definite results that come from that come when we obey James. What James said here in the word of God, when we confess our faults. Good morning, Linda. My Alabama farm life. Good morning. Good morning. The very first thing that begins there is restoration. There is healing. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. God begins to heal homes. God begins to heal relationships. God begins to heal minds. God begins to heal spirits. And God begins to heal bodies. Not only is there restoration, there is reconciliation. And did you know that when we begin to confess our faults, that God just brings us together as we confess our faults to one another? There are many people who have resentment against someone else. And those resentments have been festering and festering and festering. Now, when we begin to confess our faults to one another, you're going to find that the festering, the festering sores of resentment and distrust begin to evaporate and begin to melt away. There is restoration. There is reconciliation. And there is revival that comes when we confess our faults to one another and pray for one another. You can study the history of revival, and you're going to find that out of every great revival, absolutely is marked and saturated with this one thing that I'm talking about, a confession of fault to one another. Revival, the, the, the lifting up of the spirit in a massive way, has to begin with confession. Confession to the Lord and confession to one another. There's so many different types that we need to look at. 41 people in here. Good morning. Good morning. Highland Homestead. I didn't say I said kind of I mentioned your name earlier, but Highland Homestead. Good morning, Eva. Let's see who else. Happy Sunday, my Alabama farm life. Awesome. Awesome. Now, most of us, most of us are trying to save face. And that's the one thing we need to lose. We need to drop it. Most of us are trying to maintain our dignity rather than have revival. If you study the history of revival again, in the Great Awakening, it began when people began to confess their faults to one another and pray for one another. It was true in the book of Acts. I want you to notice a mighty revival that took place. The Bible says in verse 18 that many believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price to them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And when that and what and what was the result of that confession and repentance? That is getting rid of the books of the occult and burning those things and destroying those things that were open and being open with brothers and sisters and confessing their faults and saying and praying for, and I pray for you. What was the result of all this? Look in verse 20. So mighty grew the word of God and prevailed, Acts 19, 20. 
That is, the word of God spread and the word of God had power because there was confession in the church. All these pagans and heathens, and uh, they were in the church. They had these books. They had these things in their lives that they were hiding. They had them. They would go to church and be this one person. And pat people on the back and shake hands and give some hugs. But they had all these things at home that were of their past life. The old man. And then revival came. We started praying for one another. We started saying, I've got this in my life. I need to get rid of it. And we burned it together. And we prayed together. And we got over it through God's power together. Amazing. How to garden. Good morning. How to garden. Do you know what real revival is? Do you know what real spiritual power is? It's not just getting the roof off. You know, raise the roof. It's getting the walls down. You say, many of us are content to confess our sins to the Lord. Confess our faults to the Lord. We're glad to get the roof off. But we sure don't want to get the walls down, now do we? I mean, we don't want anybody else to know what's in our hearts. We don't want anybody else to see where we fail or faulted. We don't want anybody else to know our faults. And we refuse to get those walls down. But friends... Real revival, genuine revival, revival from above, revival that heals, revival that restores, rival, revival that reconciles is a revival where we confess our faults, not only to God, but to one another. Man, getting, getting, getting personal here, huh? Thank you, Lila. Lila says, anyone needing prayer, please put it in here in the comments. Please do. I may not be able to read them or call them out as I'm doing the lesson today, but everyone in here is reading and watching and lifting you up, lifting you up. Please, please do. Now, having, having said all that, I want to say something about the confession of sin. The confession of sins needs to be in keeping with the circle of sin. Now, this is important. Now, the devil can use the confession of sin to his advantage in people not wise and if people are not scriptural. He can do that. The Bible does not teach that we should necessarily broadcast our sins to everybody indiscriminately. We may find ourselves casting our pearls before swine, Matthew 7, 6. So don't, don't just throw out to the world, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a heathen, I do these things. Because people could take advantage of that. Look at the circle of sin and focus on where your prayer should be. And that circle of sin and circle of confession need be relatively the same. For example, if there's a private sin in your heart, and in your life, those need to be private confessions before God and God alone. The exception is that if you may include your prayer partner, if you have somebody that you can trust who is very intimate and you pray with and, you, and that person says, help me. I've had this problem of lust. I've had the problem of pride. I've had the problem of selfishness. I've had this problem and it's a personal problem and it's within me. So if you have those people, you can do that. But otherwise, those are to God. Those are your personal problems, your interior problems, ones that aren't affected. Those are between you and God or, or you and these people that are in your inner circle. k &R Destinations, good morning. Good morning. And that is private sin and private confession. Now, what about personal sin? And by personal sin, I mean sin against another person. Not personal within myself, but a sin against another person. If I sin against Kevin, Lazy Pond Farm, I need to confess to Kevin. I need to tell Kevin between him and myself alone and ask Kevin to forgive me. 
if it's gone no further than between me and Kevin, I need to confess my fault to Kevin and say, say, Kevin, this is where I failed you, or this is where I abused you, or this is where I misused you, and this is the way I've sinned against you. And Kevin, for Jesus' sake, please forgive me. Now, I don't know that I've ever sinned against Kevin from Lazy Pond Farm, but uh, we, we do. We sin against our friends. We do. You're like, wow, they're my friends. Why would I sin against them? We do. It's not a secret. We do. We sin against our friends. We sin against our family. We sin against God. We sin against ourselves. Now, that's not going to drive a wedge between me and Kevin. It's going to put a bond of love around us. I've had people come up to me and confess to me um, some feeling that they've, they've had toward me or, or some resentment they've had towards me. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you, they've, that's never caused me to think less of them. And always esteems that person more in my eyes. Because I know what torture sometimes it is for a person to go through that, to even come to somebody and humble themselves and say, I want you to forgive me. But I tell you, I feel the power of Jesus when someone does that. I feel the flutter of angel wings when someone does that. When we begin to confess our faults to one another. Little Farmer's Farm from the UK, good morning. Morgan's Happy Place prayer request. Stage one breast cancer. My children, they're... Morgan's happy place. My wife, you know, Starla, diagnosed stage one breast cancer, just had surgery this week. She's home convalescing. I've been home with her all week. Um, doctors seem to have taken it all. Uh, they're checking the sentinel lymph nodes, making sure those are clear. And um, we just pray that God's healing mercies are over her, just as we have faith for you. Um, so much Morgan's happy place. Um please, please find someone you can trust. Find someone that you can love to tell them how you feel about this. Tell them how you feel about what's going on in your life. Find that personal person that's in love with the Jesus as just as much as you are. And both of you pray together. When you can find someone like that, you'll feel the healing. You'll feel the healing both Physically, spiritually, mentally, you'll feel the healing. And then, friends, when there is public sin, there needs to be public confession. When a person is openly, outwardly, notoriously wicked, doing wicked sin, and it's a matter of public knowledge, then not only do they need to get right individually, they need to get right before the community. And the prayer of healing here is there is a confession that precedes it. What a day it will be in our churches when confession replaces criticism and compassion replaces condemnation. We need to learn to confess our faults to one another and pray for one another. Now, I talk to you about confession that precedes it. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the intercession that provides it. I'm talking about healing now and the intercession that provides it. Let's look again at verse 16. Confess your faults to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, the confession of a fault is not a call to criticism. It's a call to prayer. And God wants us to pray to him. God encourages us, encourages us to pray to him. Thank you, Yuri. I appreciate you. Prayer is not a preparation for service. This is, this is mind-blowing. Prayer is not a preparation for service. Prayer is service. Prayer is not getting ready to minister. Prayer is ministry in of itself. And don't, don't tell me, therefore, there's no ministry that you can have. 
If you can pray, you can minister. It's the most valuable service you can render. And you may do more than pray after you've prayed. But you can't do more than pray until you've prayed. Does that make sense? Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Absolutely, Florida Chicken Ventures. Say it louder so the folks in the back can hear. Back in here. Woohoo! <laughs> Now the sick need more than your pity. The sick need more than your pity. They need your prayers. And those who are sinful need them more than your compassion. They need your prayer. And the Bible teaches very clearly and very plainly that we're to pray for one another. I think that someone was quite correct when he said that the, the Christian army is the only army in the world that shoots its own wounded. Now, when a person is at a fault, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. Galatians 6, 1. Wow! Powerful! Lest we be tempted. Now, are we to... Now, are we to pray then? Look at this prayer of intercession. What kind of prayer is it to be? Well, let's look closer at verse 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, the word effectual fervent, and it's a word that is used um, two words in the English and one word in the Greek. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man tells us exactly what prayer is to be. Now listen to the words here, effectual fervent. It's a word that literally means stretched out. We could read it this way. The stretched out prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now the idea of stretched out is the idea of a horse that is running at full gallop. And you've seen pictures of a horse with his front legs and his back legs out this way and stretched out, right? Full gallop. Or you've seen perhaps an athlete who is running for the goal and the ribbon, and there, and there he is trying to break the ribbon with all his heart as he's stretched out. Now, he's not talking about being stretched out upon the bed. He's talking about prayer that is intense, fervent like an athlete, with every nerve, every ounce, every inch, every fiber stretched out, intense prayer. I believe that one of, one of the faults of our praying, praying today is that so much of our prayer is lackadaisical. Not a word you hear very often, is it? Lackadaisical. Good Lord, Good devil, now I lay me down to sleep kind of prayer. Take it or leave it type of prayer. But if you'll read the Bible, the prayers of some of the, the good saints, you're going to find out what these saints prayed as they stretched themselves out before God to get a hold of God. Listen, listen, God. In Genesis chapter 32, where verse 6, Jacob prayed, and he got a hold of God. And he said, oh God, I will not let you go until you bless me. Didn't he all talk to God that way? Seems almost, you know, opposite of what we should, what we should be doing, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's just not typical. B Heads Outdoors, good morning, new, new member of Ridge Life. Thank you very much for joining. I appreciate you. Lila Newton, so let's pray for the one that hit the thumbs down. <laughs> hey, that's that's the way it is, Lila. That's the way it is. But you're right. You are absolutely right. We need to pray for them. We don't just pray for the thumbs up and the people that are on our side of the river. We need to pray for the people that are on the other side of the river going the opposite direction. Sometimes it's a lazy river. Sometimes it's a raging rapids. But they need our prayer, that's for sure. 
I've had to pray that way sometimes. I'm, I've, I've, I've had to pray that way to God. I tell you, I've gotten on my knees and tried to pray. And all the forces of hell come against me. My mind will run like a squirrel cage. Y'all feel that way? I get sleepy. I gather wool. I start saying one thing, talking to God, and start thinking about something else. My knees begin to hurt. My body begins to ache. All sorts of things start to happen to me when I'm trying to call for God. Has that ever happened to y'all? Something inter something intercedes. Something distracts you. You're doing your uh, your your rote memorization prayer before you eat, before you go to bed, when you wake up. Do you you get distracted? I bet it does. Happens to me, happens to the pastors, happens to the saint, happens to all of us. The enemy moves that way. And the devil will, loo will lose will of all, he will lose will of all the artillery in hell to keep you from a fervent outstretched prayer. If I die on my knees, I'm going to stay there until I have a consciousness of his presence. Till I'm in heaven's throne. And when I come to that place, not long till I'm there. Beautiful words. Now, not, now, not only is James talking about the intensity of the prayer. He's talking about the integrity of the prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, that is. A man whose heart is clean before God. So much of our praying is a smoke screen to cover up our sin. And we don't intend to confess our sin. We, we just want God to bless us. It's sort of a bless us anyhow. But friends, the Bible says we're to confess our faults to one another and we're to pray for one another that we may be healed. And until there's that, that confession, there cannot be the proper intercession. It's the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth, availeth much. Whatever you pray in my name, you will receive. But it's the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. It gives the results. It, that allows the intercession. Isn't that amazing? We forget about these things. We take the part we love. And we don't read these right here. Annie Ann agrees. Yes, it does happen. It does happen. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. Proverbs 15, 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. We just said earlier, whatever you pray in my name, you will receive. So, does the wicked pray in his name? Do they just say his name? Do they really have faith in him? Have they done? Again, I'm not saying works. Works do not result in salvation. Works do not result. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about repentance. I'm talking about reconciliation, revival. Being a part of God's kingdom. But he heareth the prayer of the righteous. Now, if it's sin in your heart, God, as far as you're concerned, is 10,000 miles away. Psalm chapter 66 and verse 18. If, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Psalm 66, 18. That's what God's word says. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God. And your sins have hid your face from him. That he will not hear. Isaiah 59, 1, 2. It's not that God cannot hear. But it's that God will not hear. We've separated ourselves from God. We've 
removed ourselves from God via our sin. And then we pray to get that new car in Jesus' name. And it doesn't happen. We pray that my, my sore shoulder heals quickly in Jesus' name. But it doesn't happen. Because what have I been doing with this hand? The sin that this hand is, is done for days and days and weeks and weeks that the mind has led to do. And then I pray in Jesus' name, I hope my shoulder be healed. I've removed myself from him. It's not that he can't hear. I've just taken myself so far away. We talked about positional righteousness um, in the past. Positional righteousness. That is one kind of righteousness. That is, when, when I receive Christ as my personal Savior, when I repent of my sin and trust Christ, positionally, I am saved. Positionally. I am in that position of, of being saved. God imputes righteousness to me, and in the sight of God, I am righteous. I am going to heaven. There's no good in me other than what God gave me at the point of salvation. That Holy Spirit gift is what's righteous in me. And I try to be more and more like it every day. That's how the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. I've received the Holy Spirit in my heart. Those prayers have intercession from God because God's in me and they can be answered. And they will be answered because those who pray in his name, they shall receive. Are you following? You see how all that word, how all the words of the Bible play to truth there. That positionally I am righteous because God gave me that righteousness in a small part in me. And I want to grow that righteousness by becoming more and more like him every day. There's nothing good in me. Nothing. But that righteousness that God gave us at the point of salvation. And then the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Clear some pop-ups here so I can see what y'all are saying. Rebel Cantor says, I have a verse on my wall from, and then just, oh. <laughs> uh, Joy Blessed Life says, God wants us all to express our human need of him and he's quick to help us in everything. Isn't that so true? Oh, thank you, Beheads Outdoors. Says, so glad I found the Sunday morning sermon on here. Normally, I'm not, I don't do sermons. Uh, they're lessons from Ridge. Um, we take God's word and we talk about points, kind of like we're doing today. But today's actually does, uh, is derived from a Brother Adrian Rogers uh, sermon. So all the credit to him and God. All the credit to him and God for this lesson today. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you there's more than positional righteousness. There is practical righteousness. And there is more that is imputed righteousness there is in, than there is imparted righteousness. And even though I may be saved, and even though my sin may be under the blood, if there's unconfessed, unrepented sin in my life, if there's not practical righteousness, and if I'm not walking before God, then I have no right to expect God to hear my prayer. As a matter of fact, God has promised that he will not hear my prayer. It's tough. Now, I don't know about you, but it's important to me that God hears my prayers. I'm sure you do too. Many of you have heard the illustration of how they, uh, this is how they catch monkeys in, so in the South Sea Islands. If you haven't heard this before, you've heard something similar to it. So you know what they do? They take a coconut and they strap it to a palm tree. They hollow out a hole in the top of the coconut. And just a small hole, a little small hole. So small, the monkey can just straighten out his fingers and slip his you know, hand into in the hole. Well, why would the why would the why would the monkey slip his fingers in the hole? Because they put rice in the hole. 
And the monkey wanting the rice will slip his paw into the coconut, take a fistful of the rice. And now while the fist is balled up like that, doubled up, it cannot withdraw from the hole. And then the captor can come along, take the monkey. Well, you say, stupid monkey. All he has to do is let go, pull his hand out and run. And that's right. He won't do it, though. He'll stay there and beg and squeal and scream and cry and chatter and wiggle. But he'll never open his hand and let go of the rice. Yes, stupid monkey. Stupid monkey. I know some people who will get before God and they'll beg and they'll plead and they'll cry and they'll whimper and they'll ask God to hear their prayers and they won't let go of that sin. The sin in their lives that is preventing God from answering those prayers. They will not. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not him hear me. There is no sin worth not having your prayers answered. None. What sin is there worth having God not hear you? Friends, think of the intensity of the prayer. Think of the integrity of the prayer. The effectual, fervent, stretched out prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is the kind of praying we need to do. Sharon Delaney, good morning. Sometimes I need to clean out my closet, so to speak, so I'm able to hear God's answer to my prayers. <laughs> you, you got that right. Sometimes he answers them, and we're so busy, we don't even hear the answer. Good morning, good morning, Sharon. I'm talking to you about the confession that precedes this healing. The confession. The intercession that provides it. And now think, think with me about the illustration that proves it. The illustration that proves the healing. Power of prayer. Notice what James does. He illustrates it. Any good sermon lesson, Bible study, ought to have an illustration. And James illustrates it with Elias. That's the New Testament name for the Old Testament, Elijah. So with your permission, I'm going to use Elijah instead of Elias. Or even without your permission, I'm going to do it that way anyway. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, God doesn't want us to misunderstand this. So he gives us a wonderful illustration of the prayer that heals. First Kings chapter 18. Now, you will remember that there was sickness in the land of Israel. There was the need of revival, and there was a drought that was there because of the sins of God's people. Now, I'm going to begin to be reading here in Kings 18.42. This is the illustration that James is talking about when he said that Elijah was a man like fashions as we are, and prayed earnestly that it might not rain. 1 Kings 18.42-45. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth and he put his face between his knees and he said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, there is nothing. And he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud of the sea like a man's head. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot. And get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass that in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. 
What does this? What does all this tell us? This is the illustration that James was talking about. This is the illustration that proves it. What James is saying is that if God heard the prayer of Elijah, when Elijah met God's conditions, that God will hear the prayer of Tim. When Tim meets God's commission. Now notice the person of the prayer. It was Elijah. James said Elijah was a man of like passions, as we are. Have you ever read these stories of men in the Bible and thought that sometimes they've lived in a different world? They breathed the different air, and somehow they were not like us. And somehow God showed them favors that he doesn't show us. Have you ever done that? I know I have. I just think, well, they just weren't like us. James says, forget that stuff. They were just like us. Joy Blessed Life says, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with all the oil of gladness more than your companions. Psalms 45, 7. Thank you. Elijah was not an extraordinary man. He was an ordinary man. He was a man of like passions, and I can prove it because right here in chapter 18, he has a wonderful victory. And in chapter 19, you find him running from Jezebel. I mean, you can find it. He gets so depressed that he puts his face upon the ground and asks God to kill him and prays that he might die. It makes me feel better if God can answer a prayer for a man like him then maybe he can answer a prayer for me. You see, he was an ordinary man, not a perfect man. He wasn't perfect. Now, obviously, none of us are. Walsh Farms, good morning. One Acre Homestead, good morning. Awesome, good to have you all in here. Talking about the healing power of prayer. Now, notice... Not only the person of the prayer, Elijah, but notice the place of the prayer. Look again, if you will, in, in verse 42 of this chapter. The Bible says that Ahab went out, went up to eat and to drink with Elijah up on top of Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. That old guy, Ahab, the king of Israel, is down there eating and drinking. And that's the problem with so many of us. We know a lot about feasting and fasting. We know a lot about parties, good times, but we know a little about prayer. Here was this man who knew how to get alone with God. He got up there on the mountaintop alone with God. He, with, he withdrew himself from the crowd Jesus told us to pray to the Father, which is in secret, Matthew 6.6. 6. And the secret of, 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 of this ministry, the secret of your teaching, the measure of your life is not how well you preach or teach in public, but how well you pray in private. There's the measure God takes. And I want to tell you, this frightens me. It really frightens me, but encourage me. It, it encourages me and it instructs me. Here is a man who knew how to get alone with God in prayer. And the reason I say this is I can do these Sunday's lessons from the Ridge and speak to you all. I have, you know, 30 to 50 to 100 people, 1,000 people in the replay listen to it. And I, I can do a good job for God. But if I can't get alone in my prayer closet, and pray at night for healing for my wife or healing for my kids or healing for this land or this, this, this society. If I can't do that with an outstretched, fervent prayer, I'm a failure. I can do these lessons from Ridge all day long. But if I can't pray to God to be heard, it's scary. It really is scary. 
Alicia says you can't be a Sunday Christian. Amen, sister. And this is the illustration now that James is using. The person of the prayer of an ordinary man. The place of the prayer. He found a place where he could get alone with God. And this particular place was top of Mount Carmel. I thought of the old prophets, you know, praying up there. He withdrew from the crowd. Jesus did exactly the same thing, did he not? Notice the posture of the prayer. Look in verse 42. He cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Here's a man who, humili who humiliates himself before God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. He didn't strut into the presence of God. Here's a man bowed down with his head between his knees, humiliated, broken before God. Close in these pop-ups. Sorry. Do you know why he was as bold as a lion when he was brought before Ahab? Remember the king of Israel? Because he knew how to kneel before God. And a man who knows how to kneel before God can stand before anybody. Who's going to fear King Ahab when he's just had an audience with the king of kings? Here's a man who's gotten alone on his knees before God. But notice not only the posture of the prayer, notice the passion of the prayer. Look again in verse 42. The Bible says, and he cast himself down. He didn't just kneel. I see the man in great intensity. The idea is here that he stretched out and he throws himself down before the Lord. He means business with God. This is what James is talking about when he says the effectual fervent prayer. The stretched out prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We've said that over and over today. Passion of the prayer. Prayer is seeking. Prayer is asking. Prayer is knocking. You say, well, I just don't believe the Lord wants us to have all that emotion. I don't believe the Lord wants us to have that intensity. I need, need to be quiet and pray in, in peace and tranquility. And, mm. well, maybe you know more than I do about prayer. Maybe you know more than Jesus does about prayer. Or James. But let me tell you how the Lord Jesus prayed in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says, He had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. Hebrews 5, 7. Jesus, prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears. Now, it's not easy to pray. I'd rather take an hour to talk than a half hour to pray. I'd rather do almost anything as far as physical strain on my body than to spend extended power and time in prayer. The concentration, the effort, and the energy it takes. I'll tell you, friends, that all the powers of hell are going to come against you when you pray and when you intercede with the Almighty. I know you feel that. I know you feel that. It's Everything draws us away. Everything draws us away from that simple communion time with the Lord. But here is what I want to here is what I want to call the passion of the prayer. And I want, what I want you to notice the persistence of the prayer. Look again in verse 43. And he said to his servant, Go up now and look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There's nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. That is, here is Elijah. And he's praying for rain, and he says, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, send the rain. We need the rain. Servant, go to see if you see a cloud. No cloud. Oh, God, send the rain. God, we need the rain. God, hear my prayer. Servant, go see if you see a cloud. He prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed, and he did not stop praying. Luke 18, verse 1. 
And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, Luke 18, 1. I cannot tell you why God makes us keep asking. I cannot tell you why we must sometimes importune and just continue to ask God. But the Bible says, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. Luke 11, 9. That's what the language means. It's something that we just keep on doing. We press the rap through in prayer. Here's a man who asked and he continued to ask. And he pressed hard against heaven. Somebody said, until there was a handprint left in heaven, a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And finally, the answer came. And God, whose delays are not denials, answered the prayer. Let me tell you something. Colossians 4 verse 2 says, continue in prayer. Continue in prayer, which is the same, Isaiah 30, 18. Therefore will the Lord wait, and he may be gracious unto you. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. The power of prayer. The last thing, the power of prayer. Look in verse 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with the clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. The prayer was answered. Amen. The prayer was answered. I love this. I love this. We get so lost in prayer. We get so lost in life that we just think that God doesn't hear us, that he won't hear us, that he denies us. They're not denials. They're delays. And the reason for the delay is us. We are the reason for the delay. Now, that's the illustration that James uses when he tells us how to pray for healing. It's not always God's will to heal. It's not always God's will to send the rain. But I'm telling you, friends, when we know the heart and mind of of God many times we do not have the will of God because we do not pray we have not because we ask not how to pray for healing James has told us there's the confession that precedes it there's the intercession that provides it there's the illustration that proves it. The man Elijah was a man just like you and me, an ordinary man who did extraordinary things. Amen. You can too. You can do extraordinary things through the power of God in your life. Amen. Jason Avers, good morning, brother. Incidentally, there are a lot of mountains on their on their way to the sea. In a few billion years, they'll be getting there. But they'll be get, they're getting there. There you go. Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Did you love that? that, that again, that wasn't me. That was Adrian Rogers, Bellevue Baptist Church, Love Worth Finding Ministry. Go check out Love Worth Finding by Adrian Rogers. So many good, so many good uh, sermons. Um, love that man. Love that man. He, he just has a way of bringing us to God. Bringing the word to us. What a pastor does. I'm not a pastor. I use the words of a pastor today to help. Of course, there's a lot of, you know, my supposition in there, but not around the, the word is the word. And the word speaks for itself, whether Brother Adrian says it or little old me says it. The word is as powerful as when the biggest pastor in the world or the little old country boy from West Tennessee speaks it. And I'm just so glad 
that all of you, there were 50 thumbs up for this video, 50 thumbs up. And I hope that many, many more get to hear the wonderful, awesome power of prayer in the replays. Walsh Farms, good morning, good morning. Uh, so, so, I just love it. Hour and nine minutes, didn't go over too long there. But I am just as happy as I can be about uh, these words from Brother Adrian Rogers. And I hope, Bobby Yance, good morning, Bobby Yance. I hope that uh, there were tons and tons of prayer, prayer requests in the comments today. And I know, I know that all my good friends there are lifting those up in prayer. And uh, if you've got these, got these things that are preventing you from communing with God, please find, find who you need to confess your sins to, whether it's private, personal, or community sins. Find the appropriate circle of, 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 of sin there and confess it amongst them. God is always in those circles. God's in every circle. Start there. Start there. And then once you've confessed those sins, start looking at the passion of your prayer. Is your heart behind it? Is your spirit, is your soul, is the righteousness that's in you from being saved in your prayer? If it is, God's hearing you. He's not delaying. He knows the, he has perfect timing. He has perfect, perfect timing. Thank you. Come on. Come on, Homestead. Thank you, Milkman. I appreciate you, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Alicia says, God bless you and Starla that you're doing this for every Sunday, brother. Such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Starla, she's a she's a saint. I appreciate her so much for putting up with me. That's for sure. Jason says, long story short, when reordering the universe to answer prayers, sometimes it takes a little longer to make things happen than one would like. Yes, that is so true. God's timing is perfect. We just want to rush. We want to rush. We want to rush everything, don't we? We want to rush the planting. Plants die. We want to rush the harvest. We don't, we don't reap the harvest because there's not enough ready yet. We just rush, rush, rush. Rush, rush, rush. Take care of my Alabama farm. I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. Well, guys, I think it's about time to get out and get this Sunday rolling. I appreciate everybody for staying with us here today. Please continue to pray for my wife, Starla. Uh, I know you will lift her up in prayer for God's perfect healing in her life. And uh, we feel it. We, we definitely, we definitely feel it. Thank you for the new member today. I appreciate you so, so much. And um, hope to see you all again Tuesday for the watch and grow. Thank you, Linda. Oh, I appreciate you, Linda. No, I, I it's, it's the pleasure is all mine. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Don Lee. My kid's stepdad could use some prayers. Yes, Don Lee. Don Lee's kid's stepdad needs some prayers, everybody. Please lift it up. Willis Dockery, thank you so much. Leanne Cotner, good morning. Um, Fordman, a.k.a. Kenneth Oaks, thank you so much. All the people coming up now. I appreciate everyone. Um, Irene Turner, thanks for being here. Joy Bless Life, thank you. Alicia, thanks as always. D Gads, oh, you're so welcome. So welcome. Tell Jason I said hello. Love him to death. Ooh, Mary Ranch, thank you, Mary. Keep me, keep me filled. There's uh, Mel and Gary. Hey, what's up? We just did an hour and thirteen minute long uh, lesson on the healing power of prayer. Mel and Gary, Gary I, we're praying for you on your journeys to Arkansas from the desert southwest in Arizona. We know that God's hand will be upon your journeys. God's hand will be upon your journeys. Just keep Him with you along for the ride. Okay, Mel and Gary, love you so much. Simplistic, minimalistic. Woohoo! Lala Newton, thank you so much. Auntie Ann, thank you so much. All the good people. I think it's time to get out of here. We are going to end this live stream and move, move on with our day. So I hope everyone just continues to pray, 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 pray so hard, so hard. So until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and go Ridgeline.